Hedge Dammer, Old Shahar, Old Vagoman, Dill, the Rock and Roll Podcast, Kola and Dar Hashvin. Now that I butchered that intro in Swedish, everyone, let me say hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Rock and Roll Podcast. Check out this record. My name is Frank, and with me is my good buddy, Mark. <laughs> and I'd like to say something else in Swedish, and that is gratis pa vojendagen. That's right, folks. I have no idea if I pronounce that even an inkling correct, but that means <laughs> happy birthday, Mark, because it is that guy's birthday. Yay! It's my birthday! Birthday whiskey. Birthday whiskey. Mm -hmm. and, you'll, and you'll get the sweetest stuff later while, while, while I try to tie that in there. Yeah. Because this episode's about the Muppets, and Frank, Frank's favorite Muppet is the Swedish chef. Oh, that's right. Hand, hands down. In fact, quick story: my youngest, when we were watching an episode of the the the, the old Muppet Show, and mm -hmm. the pigs invaded, so they invaded every um, every skit. So mm -hmm. there was a skit of the Swedish pig instead of the Swedish chef, and she was horrified. <laughs> is that the one where they try to find like? another female pig that's not miss piggy yes and miss piggy like gets so mad at her and like ends up beating her up yeah. oh absolutely yeah so and the good. green pig acts as kermit and stuff like that it's so amazing mm -hmm. it's so amazing but anyway you're listening to us right so you can find us on spotify apple podcast amazon music podcast and you can see these mugs right here mm -hmm. on the old youtube mark are you making that face buddy <laughs> i have no idea i have no idea uh you know what you're asking yourself? When does this wonderfully charming little podcast about Mark's birthday get released so you can hear it sizzle as it comes off the presses? Great question. Thanks for asking. Fortunately for you, new episodes drop every Friday for your listening and viewing pleasure. That's right. And if you're hearing us for the first time, it's Mark's birthday. And Yay! he loves vinyl. So send mm -hmm. a lot of vinyl to him. He will leave you his information to send. Mm -hmm his requests right to him uh and you're probably not annoyed with one of our past reviews so welcome everyone we give review us time. records give us time especially with the next episode coming up we review records track by track we have a lot of musical discussions lots of musical discussions spotlight episodes which we might even include some mysteries rock and roll mysteries in there and mm -hmm. we just started scratching the surface so as i like to say mark we're just getting warmed up oh we are getting warm frank but be sure to check out our verse series where we'll pit two bands or albums or songs or more against each other and make them duke it out for total stereo domination. Gets better and better. Gets Thank absolutely you. better and better. The whiskey helps. No, oh, of course it does. Yes. Now be sure to check us out on Instagram and our Facebook group. And hopefully these episodes will leave you guys wanting more of our musical goodness. And of course, Mark's, Mark's birthday whiskey. Birthday whiskey. Absolutely. And if you got a record you want us uh, to check out, uh, drop a comment wherever you find us. Like, subscribe, send Mark records. So I say this, Mark, besides happy birthday, in the early 2000s, there was mm -hmm. a garage rock revival. Uh, oh. You had bands such as mm -hmm. the White Stripes, oh. uh, Block Party, mm -hmm. Arctic Monkeys, uh -huh. The Vines, that's mm -hmm. questionable, your favorite, The Strokes, <laughs> and, and this band that we're going to talk about, The Hives. So, so Mark, looking back, this was an interesting time. Uh, your thoughts on when you first came across The Hives? Yeah, there's something about music from the early aughts, uh, mm -hmm. but my brain just completely uh, is left blank by it. Uh, it might be all the birthday whiskey. I'm not sure, um, at least when it comes to the Garage Revival stuff. Unfortunately, um, the Strokes are the only band for some reason that I can kind of remember on my own without people goading me into a further conversation. So um, that, that's probably why Frank referred to it as my favorite band. <laughs> yes. Anyways, um, I definitely had the the comp. I want to guess that it was like Punkorama four, five, or six. One of those Franks. Maybe they were a multiple. Um, that had um, hate to t hate to say I told you so on it. Yeah. Um, and I remember thinking, oh, that's a cool, interesting take. But I never really bothered to get into the band. Um, so. You know, uh, as far as from back then, uh, yeah, I don't really have a memory of what my first <laughs> impressions were. Um, however, when it, first impressions of listening to the record now, 
Oh man, I'm so stoked you brought this up. This is such a cool record. Um, I had an absolute great time with the hives. Stick around. I have nothing horrible to say, uh, <laughs> unless you don't like the hives, in which case you're wrong. So fuck you. There you go. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now let's, let's do a quick history of the band here. Yeah, now, please. The, the band claims it was formed in 93, although formed in 89 under a different name and sound. Now, under the guidance of one Randy Fitzsimmons, I'll get to him in a second, he suggested mm -hmm. that they form a garage rock band. He gave each member a letter uh, asking them to start a band, and he allegedly acts as songwriter and manager for the band. Now, there was some other information out there that I read that this guy just doesn't exist at all. Mm. At oh, all. They, they made him up. Yeah, so it, it could be one of those scenarios, but uh, the lead singer um, uh, says that he does exist. So anyway, the band recorded a demo titled Sounds Like Sushi in 1994. Oh. Um, the following year, they were signed to a, a label that we know, Mark, uh, Burning Heart Records, a Swedish mm -hmm. independent record label. Um, and the following year, they released their debut EP, Oh Lord, When, How?, so now we're going to fast forward to 97. They released an album called Barely Legal and began touring. And the following year, they released their second EP, a.k.a. I-D-I-O-T. Um, now we're going to talk about their second studio album, Vinny Vidi Vicious. So in April 2000, through Burning Heart Records and Epitaph, right, mm -hmm. which is key here, um, this album was released. The title is a play on words, which refers to something Julius Caesar said after conquering Asia Minor in 47 BC. For all those history buffs out there, Vini Vidi Vici translates to I came, I saw, I conquered. Um, the band described themselves as being like a velvet glove with brass knuckles, both brutal and sophisticated at the same time. All right, let's talk about the lineup. So I butchered the Swedish intro earlier. I'm going to butcher these names. So the lineup for the album is Howlin, Pele, Amquist on vocals, Nicholas Arson on lead guitar, Vigilante Kalstrom <laughs> on rhythm guitar. Love that name. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Matt Destruction on bass. Mm -hmm. Destruction. And Chris Dangerous on drums. Uh, Those are some of the most Christian names I've ever heard. <laughs> common names right <laughs> just perfectly <laughs> everyday run of the mill <laughs> definitely real swedish names absolutely mm -hmm. now, let two things be known uh helen pelly and nicholas are brothers and oh. each member i i just wanted to bring this up because i found it fascinating each member actually has their own wikipedia page with actual oh. substance on it so um kudos to them man absolutely mm -hmm. so mark this came out when we were forming our first band failure by design um, you'll never find recordings of us, by the way, because I have them. But what was your impression again of the album? Like you said, I, I'm not sure if I listened to this whole album when it came out back then. Uh, but like I said, I'm 99 per sure percent sure I definitely had the hate. I told you so comp or whatever comp it was on. Right. Um, maybe I assumed the whole album sounded that way. So I never put it on, but you know, putting it on for the show, I was just like, whoa. Right. Um, I know this is supposed to have like a modern ground garage sound, uh, but it sounds pretty damn punk to me. I was into it immediately. Uh, it's got this loud and bright sound that that pulled me in. And I've been listening to it um, ever since uh, just just constantly on loop. I went through their entire discography. Uh, I have absolutely fallen in love with the hive absolutely let's yeah. so let's do it man you ready for the track by track oh most track by certainly. track on vini vd vicious and back by back say, track by track that's right and when i saw vini uh, at one point uh, earlier i was going to say weenie accidentally mm. so. <laughs> all right vini, vini, vicious. That's, right. <laughs> that's right so the first track is the hives declare gure nuclear um listen i i i really like when they when they like a band puts their name in, in songs like mm -hmm. that and they speak about themselves like in this third person because it, it, it brands them so i think it's very smart uh we we almost get this psycho billy uh intro uh and then right into this high energy 60s garage sound very straightforward lyrics here and to me the band is saying hey this is what we are and using nuclear war as the symbol mark what do you think about this short but potent first track yeah oh man i just love this big opening chords and bang we're right into that the super fuzzy 60s jam uh it's such a fun way to kick off the record for one reason 
the energy they put into it is really infectious. And honestly, it's so quick that the next track sneaks up on you like Bigfoot hiding in the trees, jumping out two feet from your face and scaring the crap out of you. I absolutely loved it. Cool, man. Absolutely. Track two, Die All Right. It's a fun tune. Uh, the band is known for their live energy, but man, I feel it on this track. Uh, when, when it comes to cash, um, I'll die all right. Uh, and with the Mr. CEO, uh, seems to be like a pink slip scenario and the person's compromising morale for cash. Much like last week's Doom Riders episode in the archives, uh, this is not overly life-changing lyrics, but it's just... It's just about them not sucking with this fun, energetic music put together. Uh, Mark, what say you on this track? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm fairly sure there's a deeper statement about currency and how it changes people uh, or whatever. But I think you nailed it, like a big portion of that. And, and really, this is an amazingly fun number with a catchy chorus uh, about wanting to die in the band <laughs> puts a, a ton of energy into this. Um, and you can tell that they're having a blast doing it. And, and so am I. It's just really, again, I, I've just been so hooked by it. that They do such a great job with these choruses and, and really just these quick little verses just to pull you in and just keep you interested in listening. Totally, totally. Track three, a get together to tear it apart. Um, this was the sound in the early 2000s. Uh, I, I say that, um, I must say that this is their brand though of garage rock with the punk energy. And I like that better than those other bands I mentioned, which is a slower version of garage rock, because mm -hmm. I think of a garage and I think of things being chaotic and what perfect way is then to incorporate some punk uh, elements to it. Uh, Mark, what'd you think of this tune? Yeah, I just love this tempo and energy. It's really smart, kind of fuck you song, but dressed up um, so that if you're not paying attention to it, you won't really notice. Uh, for a guy who loves saying fuck you, I think this is a super smart <laughs> and awesome use uh, of their sound and their energy. Definitely uh, a killer uh, punk rock tune that just it's just hiding in the garage. You know, it's it, you expect to see this band in a garage. They're just there's just so much energy and like. I, I would have loved to set in on some of this, man. It's so cool. Yeah, absolutely. Track four, Main Defender. I love this song. I love this song. So in 2002, um, for the VMAs, MTV's small brain and surface level ideas led them to this grandiose idea to pair up this band, The Hives, mm -hmm. with this other band, The Binds. You know, I'm, I'm assuming based on the similarity of the band names that they thought, A, they must be similar, and B, they must be feuding then because of A being true. Uh, well, they don't sound alike at all, at all. And they were never feuding at all. Um, however, this performance uh, and this song on, uh, on that day uh, tore it down. The opening chords, the settling down right before kicking back up to that single on chorus. Uh, I think this song has everything you need. And at the end of that performance, uh, Pele said, I know you want us to play more, but that's all we have now. So you could turn off now. And I thought that was awesome. Uh, he was right because the vines suck. Mark, <laughs> let me tell you something. If Frank tells you a band sucks like the vines and he's telling you that they suck, Trust Frank. He wouldn't tell you they sucked if they didn't tell you they sucked. Thank so, you. So um, for what it's worth, I don't remember them at all. Uh, <laughs> but that's okay because I trust in Frank. Uh, that said, this song totally fucking rules. Oh. Uh, I love the the distortion, the distorted fuzz on the guitar. I mean, it's just so cranked up. I love it. The way his vocals are just pushed louder and louder than they really need to be. But it totally works to just feel like they're trying to climb out of your speaker. Totally awesome. I'm also in love with the tempo here. It's not just a slow jam or a mid-tempo kind of rocker. It's a slowed down variation on what they what you've heard already. Uh, and they really make it work by pushing everything all that much louder to encompass it. So you're not paying attention to the fact that all of a sudden they're they're at a slower speed. They're actually just drowning you with their their volume and their noise and really oh. making the most out of that studio space. Yeah. Absolutely. It was just, just an incredible tune. Definitely check it out. Mm -hmm. um, track five, Outsmarted. Um, it's it's that blurring of lines here between, again, the garage rock and punk uh, with that chorus of Outsmarted um, selling for scrap. I mean, it just fits the whole motif here, and I absolutely love it. Mark? Yeah, I love this kind of cocky, punchy number about turning the tables and outsmarting your rivals. It's catchy and fun. It's really awesome. I I don't know what to do other than to turn it on and, and dance by myself in the room. So nice. yeah, it's awesome. Nice. 
uh, track six, hate to say, I told you so. Okay. This, this is the big hit. I mean, this was, this was everywhere right. in the early two thousands. Uh, the band actually had a running joke, uh, to play the same riff over and over to see if people would actually pick up on it, which is why we could get some repetition in the song, which is, makes it even more cool. Uh, the band is basically saying, uh, again, this is, uh, what we are and, uh, this is what we're doing, like it or not. Uh, it was with this song, the major labels started looking at the band and even thinking, this is, this is from my research that they could be the next Nirvana. Hmm. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not. I mean, I'm sure it, it, success wise, they they wanted that. Um, but I also felt that this song aged really well. Mark, what did you think? Yeah, I, I definitely think that this song aged really well. Again, we see that the band switch up their style with a little. It's probably the cleanest sounding song. Yes. Uh, on the album, and it, it's really hypnotizing and very satisfying. Yeah, it aged beautifully and probably will continue to do so for some time because we really see them excel at expanding from the garage rock to the punk rock to to really just fun encompassing music i i think it's great uh could they have been the next nirvana you know what i'd hate to put that pressure on a band especially a band this fun um yeah because it always it you know it's it's got that habit of ruining stuff so it does i agree just like cool shit be cool record labels Thank you. Love it. And um, with that note, have a nice little swig there. Ah. Birthday whiskey. This was full when I started, for those of you watching. <laughs> yeah, it, it sure was, pal. <laughs> Just wait for that top 10. Anyway, so the, the Hives introduced the metric system in time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is track seven. Uh, it's the second occurrence of the band using their name in the song titles. I really like it. Again, it creates this universe for the band as well as cementing their brand. Um, I, I like with the song that we get a little louder and, and we get with the completion of each verse and then it's over. Um, Mark, wh- what do you say about this song? Yeah. You know, this might be my favorite track on the album, Frank. Um, you know, if we were in a band today, I'd I'd be making you learn this song so that we could play it. Nice. Um, conceptually, it's about changing how people see things, right? But sonically, the band just <laughs> rips uh, when the drums uh, cut to that big stomp and sixteenth notes, uh, and the band just rides it out to the end. I'm just pure punk rock heaven. It's awesome, awesome tune. I absolutely love it. Um, and especially the the balance, right, of that really light and clean, super poppy. Hate to say, right. I told you so. Right. And that kind of snarky Rolling Stones manner to come back with this and really just beat it in the face. I really love the placement of this on the album. Funny you mentioned Rolling Stones, too, because if, if you watch a lot of their videos on YouTube, uh, you'll you'll see a lot of uh, comparisons to the way yeah, Pele, mm-hmm. uh, uh, his animation I mean, is compared to like Mick Jagger's. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, look, if you're going to you're going to be and, and he's got the attitude, right? He's got that Mick yeah. Jagger cockiness. Right. So why wouldn't you you know, if you're going to borrow one thing from the best, borrow another. Right. Absolutely. It works. And I was doing my best not to say he's got the moves like Jagger. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry. All right. Number eight, find another girl. I, I would say that this is like the most interesting uh, track on the album because uh, there's a loads of um, loads of influences. And, and I think it could be an ingredient that the indie rock bands used as we were getting into the 2010s. Mm-hmm. Um, th- that's just what I caught up on uh, or th- that the vibes I started getting now, lyrically sure. it's nothing to write home about, but it's a real fun tune that kind of takes you away for a moment and puts you almost in this clip. So almost vacation while trying to recover from heartache uh, Mark. Yeah, I had a, uh, I heard a lot of the frights here. Uh, please see our episode on the frights in the old archive. Uh, you know, after seven, seven pretty rocking tracks it's nice that they give us a little bit of a breather before the last kind of third of the album kicks off um i like what what it does for the passing uh for the passing Uh, i like what it does for the album and how it it allows time to pass and and the way the album is structured overall i think it's a a fun tune but definitely i mean it's certainly like frank said it's got that calypso to it it's got the funness to it um, there's a lot of inspirations from other places coming in play here. A really cool track. Yeah, for sure. Track nine already state control, uh, another fun and short garage song. I, for me, I wouldn't say that it, it, it's one I, I liked more than the others, but it, it, it's, it's weird as, as I was going through this. And it's funny how with albums that we review, there's this, there's these tunes in the second half of the album that sometimes just seem to be lingering uh, around. And I'm not sure, I don't have an answer for this folks at all, but I'm not sure what bands uh, could do to get more engagement here, but I just wanted to, to point that out. Mark, what'd you think on state control? 
Yeah, I really dig this one. Um, just under two minutes, uh, and that classic ethos of not being able to control your own surroundings. So you just do what you want anyways, because what's it matter if you got to be stuck somewhere? Uh, I love the drive this track has and the band's willingness to push their listeners with the, the fun choruses. Um, plus, they do this fun thing where the singer says one line and then uh, what sounds like everyone else does the next line. It's a really cool uh, <laughs> use of the full band and the full sound. Uh, they've done it a few other places, but here's a really clear example of where where they do it and where it works really well. Um, yeah, I just really like it. I think this song's pretty awesome, personally. Cool, man. Cool. Yeah. Track 10, Inspection was 1999. I'm not sure what the title even means, but but lots of songs around this time were chatting up 1999 <laughs> during those that era. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's another fast, punchy song. Uh, I wouldn't say it really does anything overly for me, but uh, you know, obviously it's, it's not bad. What would you think? Yeah, this uh, feels like it might be the filler track to me. Um, I like I like it fine, but yeah, it's it doesn't add a whole much depth wise to the album other than a fun kind of palm muted breakdown towards the the end. We hadn't really seen them do anything like that uh, up to this point, but um, yeah, it, it's okay. You, you're not going to be like, oh, this track, um, <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> but it's fine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the best way to describe it. Uh, mm-hmm. Knock knock, Mark. Uh, who's there? Yeah, Yahoo. No, Mark. I actually use Google to research our oh. episode, so, so ah. Ah, I, I had no idea why I inserted the very corny <laughs> knock knock joke. But this song is called Knock Knock, uh, and I think it was better though than the the previous track. Mark, what do you think the song? Yeah, I don't know. This one uh, lost me a bit with the the knock knocks. Um, it's probably the most con- cohesive, excuse me, out of the last uh, two songs and this one thematically. Um, but otherwise, I, I kind of prefer them kind of in the order that led up to this. Um, it's got a fun energy uh, if it's just on in the background, but it's not a number that, you know, uh, you need to dissect. I think this is probably the lowest um, point in the album for me. Not that it's bad. It just doesn't do anything. It hasn't raised the meter at all. Well, that knock knock joke could have been the lowest point of the episode, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't want to say the entire show, but could it? Oh, no, it's fine. There it's go, fine. There you go. There you go. Yeah. All right. Last track, Supply and, <laughs> Supply and Demand. Uh, it's another favorite of mine. Uh, mm-hmm. my, my boss, he's a probable bore. A great opening line. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like learning about how well, a, uh, or I, I like the learning about how well a company is doing and realizing that you're not getting paid much. Anywho, mm-hmm. I, I think it's a great way to end the album. This song and Main Offender um, is, I think, really my two favorite tunes here. Mark, did you did you like this as the last track? Yeah, I dig this number. I like it as a closer. I love the little guitar lick they tie to the phrase supply and demand yes. um, through the choruses. I think it's really cool. Um, and the way they rock out just to close the album, uh, really fun. Uh, certainly a great way to end the, the album, but really a cool track as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, so Mark, it's a very short record and it was a kind of a trip down memory lane in the sense where, you know, I remember us chatting about it during our band days and mm-hmm. now we're able to give it a fair amount of attention, which I'm glad we did. So your, your final thoughts. Yeah. I wish I could remember more of those conversations. I, <laughs> I, I just don't, uh, but I'm so happy you picked this for the show. Cause uh, it was just a wonderful burst of energy I'd been looking for uh, in a record. Um, I love the way they explore the boundaries of their own sound without apology or concern for the listener. It's got pop appeal. It's got punk rock ethos. It's got amazing overdriven uh, 60s fuzzy guitars. And quite honestly, an amazing replay value. I really like this record. I'm going to give it a solid 7 out of 10. Um, I will be picking this up as soon as I can on vinyl. Definitely check out this record. I loved it. Nice, nice. So I really appreciate the band. I like the universe they created, uh, the mm-hmm. hives. It's these you know guys wearing black and white suits and playing this really loud garage punk rock. Um, I I think they may actually fall into one of those categories where the, you know their live shows almost even supersede the the their uh, their album recordings. Uh, I mean, if you put on their performances, just go to go to YouTube. I mean, the whole world just absolutely moves and shakes, and it's it's that impressive. Mm-hmm. Um, but listen, the album was super enjoyable. I do think. Um, out of the bands I mentioned for that r- revival, I liked them the best. Um, yeah. There are some flat moments, uh, and but I think you're going to get that. Um, and I think that may just be victims of the genre. Um, I 
I mean, there's only so much you could do to dedicate yourself to this sound. And um, yes, you they we do see a progression on the future records, right? Uh, yeah, which, which is pretty cool. So I give the band mad props. Um, the, the band uh, they're really a staple in in Sweden and in Europe, and they made their name out of those really hard earned performances. So I give the album a seven out of ten. Mark, nice. I like when we uh, we got <clears throat> similar ratings there. Similar ratings. Mm-hmm. 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 All right, Mark. So I'd like to do something for you on your birthday. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So it's a top 10 list. And it's a top mm-hmm. 10, all things Mark. Oh, God. <laughs> so these are some of my top experiences with you. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll say the occurrence. And this is uh-huh. completely off the cuff. So it's not on uh, the script here. And you're going to say right. your thoughts on it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and does it sound good? Uh, you know what? It will. It sh- go. It's going to. Let's there do it. Go. All right. So I have some honorable mentions and and I know you gave me uh the the permission to do a roast. It's not a roast. So uh, <laughs> I'm not that witty just for the record. So um I have some honorable mentions. Uh sure. number 1 is just our multiple trips to a place called Land Lovers where we just sat and ate a lot of wings and spuds with cheese yeah. and bacon. Best wings in South Florida and and Land talk- Lovers Plantation. And talk to music. I could have been a mm-hmm. strand where it was like every Monday night for like a year that we did. Yep. That, I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I have great memories there. I hope you you have the same. Oh, thank you, brother. Uh, another honorable mention is the uh, pretzel hot dog buns. Oh yeah, yeah. So not only are we, we massive fans, <laughs> but I remember meeting Mark <laughs> at Food and Wine Festival one year, and and he was so stoked to get a book. Oh, man, I'm so that, pissed about that, that book still. That had recipes and mm-hmm. and thinking for that all we your were favorite getting, restaurants from from eating around the world. Right, and and we thought we were going to get the recipe right, all, mm-hmm. all the all the knowledge that we needed to make pretzel hot dog buns. And at the end, they told you to buy a pack of pretzel. Yeah, hot dog the, buns. the recipe for German. Uh, Wieners and in a pretzel bun was <laughs> purchase hot dogs, uh, boil and then grill. And then for the for the pretzel buns, it was buy pretzel hot dog buns, toast. <laughs> you son of a bitch! I can't. Oh, I, I should have read this thing before I bought it. <laughs> so like thirty two dollars, man. F- I know. Tons of. <laughs> oh man! Well, th- that's the honorable mentions, and we're getting good. Oh man, that's so. just. Oof. I know. Uh-oh. All right, you ready? Number 10, you ready? Number 10, I have this title. This is the kick double fart. So nope. during, during, <laughs> during one of our walks uh, at, from our intermission during the band days, um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you kick my friend and, mm-hmm. and double farted. <laughs> and that, yeah. And that was probably some of the most amazing times ever. <laughs> yeah, it, we called that the want want, remember? Uh, yeah. Because cause I, I went to just do a big old kick and fart at the same time, and it went, Womp womp, right out of my butt. <laughs> yeah, that was good stuff. Incredible, right? Mm-hmm. Man, I remember that. I remember that so well. All right, this one is titled "Twisted Failure by Design." So, a, co- a bunch of different things going on here. Uh, yeah. When we started our band, "Failure by Design," yes, was after a brand new song. Um, mm-hmm. A Mark, uh, as he came into the band, thought it was uh, from Strong Out's "Twisted by Design," which Great I record. actually. Phenomenal record, which I wasn't uh, overly familiar with at the time. Mm. So the next part of it is is Mark get, burning that CD for me, and then we would sit there just hours upon hours of, of, of swapping CDs with each other, burning and stuff like that. So um, it, it was it was just amazing. So it's kind of that whole twisted failure by design, the whole CD trading and burning, and mm-hmm. and getting our hands on these albums. It was fun. What was um the practice studio in Davy Fat Somebody's? That guy's that guy was Sal, his name. Was that Fat Sal? Yes. Not Crackhead. Now there was Fat Sal and there was Crackhead Sal. Don't forget. Yeah. Oh, right, 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 right. Well, was that the guy with the, the warehouse that we practice in? Was that Crackhead Sal? Is that coming up? Did I ruin one? No, you did. actually you didn't. And man, okay. I, but I needed to to put him on here too. Damn it. Yeah. Remember that time we showed up to practice and there was just a car door yes. in the warehouse? <laughs> yes. For yes. no reason. Or he ate, he hit the curler from like the dirty car. Like there was a curler mm-hmm. sitting on the car, like a roof, and mm-hmm. it was just so filthy. And he was just like eating it. And I was like, oh god, pal. Yeah, yeah. Or or he found his like demos of this like weird like psychedelic oh like, yeah music. I don't know if I'd call it psychedelic. What was? Uh, <laughs> I don't garbage. Garb is it real garbage music. <laughs> yeah, I think it uh, went. 
uh stupid girl <laughs> no 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 his, his, it was terrible so like him in a in a cheap casio it wasn't even like a synthesizer <laughs> oh man all right yep. well so th- that's another one that made it to the list and rightfully so by the way mm-hmm. um the next one i have is those uh drum uh brush sticks that you used to uh get and and specifically our time in this two-piece band outfit called cheating at solitaire where i was on mm-hmm. acoustic and mark was on drums my thunder sticks and, yeah the thunder sticks yes mm-hmm. and and they kept breaking and it was just so funny because it was like you were holding back it was like mark was in a constant um uh unplugged performance the whole time and yeah he just couldn't stand that the thunder sticks were there and they just kept breaking <laughs> Well, I used to break symbols like they were nobody's business. So when I went to these like cool artsy, like if you watch the Nirvana Unplugged, it's the the the, the wrapped little thin sticks Dave Grohl is playing with. They're called thunder sticks, and yeah. they just make this cool like yes sound, and they like they really worked for what we were going for. Um, but I'd fucking break, and they're like twenty dollars a piece. I would break breaking. them every time we played. So That's amazing. Oh, uh, all right. Number seven is. The home record rap. <laughs> the home record rap. So Go again, on. in this band, we had a bass player, uh, and uh, there was some of uh, home wrecking going on. Uh, he listens to the show, so John, so sorry, but this is this part's funny. Oh and wow! So, I didn't. <laughs> so Mark came up with this. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mark! So. <laughs> So, Hi, John. So Mark came up with this uh, really, we would just swip, swap instruments, right? And, uh, you know, everyone would switch. So Mark went from behind the drums to the front and, and just started rapping just, uh, and, and he saved us one show because we were so off tune. Things were just going bad. And the only way to save it was to do this home record rap where Mark <laughs> would just get up and just start, just start rapping. And, and, and he was great, man. It was fantastic. Uh, Shout outs to Lagwagon and uh, Mama said knock you out for inspiring that. That's right. Oh, so good. So good. Mm-hmm. Uh, number six. And now my memory is starting to get a little blurry. So if, if there's details I miss you, you might need to fill me in on. But sure. Uh, we forget which band we played after a rancid show uh, mm-hmm. in downtown uh, Fort Lauderdale. Uh, and that was you, me and Chip, the MFC destroyers. Right. Thank you so oh. much. Okay. Cleverest and name, Mark Frankenship, MFC destroyer. It was amazing, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think Ed Ed and Spaghetti was another option for the. Uh, that was. That was another <laughs> recommendation I had had for that. Yeah. But we caught the overflow of the Rancid show. So the Rancid show mm-hmm. was just getting let out from a uh, culture room, not culture room, revolution. And we caught the access and um, it was Tavern 213. Yep. It was probably one of the bigger crowds that our small little uh, band ever played and catching the rants to show people after was pretty fun. I thoroughly enjoyed it, Mark. Yeah, the crowd went absolutely ape shit when we did our uh, Motorhead cover, uh, which was rad. Uh, yes. Cause they were like, oh wait, we know that song. Yes. Um, but no, that was that was a great night. That was an awesome night. I think your guitar kept getting unplugged. Uh, so we had to keep plugging you in. And yes, yeah, that was a good night. I it forget who uh, Eddie, formerly of Bum Ruckus, was in the other bl- band that played with us. That was way better than us. So they had us go on first right as the show let out. And then we disappointed everyone and they left. Before they left. They yes, yes. It was so I didn't say fun. we disappointed everyone. It was late. Rancid had already played like two hours. It was so much fun. We played like our 30 minute set and people are like, okay, fuck, let's go home. <laughs> we'll stay for, right. Stay for Ace of Spades, but then we're leaving. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, because we did that. We booked that show in the hopes that like Tim or Lars would walk over. Of course. Like, hey, what's that? Oh, I would look. Hellcat, here we come. And then, of course, they did. <laughs> the finest scumbags of Fort Lauderdale. We love you. Amazing. Loved mm-hmm. it. Loved it. Um, Number uh, five, this is the work party uh, where everyone got pissed at me and you. Do you remember that? Okay. So I bring Mark uh, to one of my uh, co-workers' uh, work parties. Um, was this at G's house? No, this was at some other person's house where mm. I can't, I can't even oh, remember. Oh, where I peed off the balcony? Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. So so that's what I'm getting to. So it was a party where uh, there was just so much, <laughs> so much alcohol, number one. Mm-hmm. And me and Mark are getting loud and getting... Uh, pretty, they like they made us hang out on the patio. Yeah, pretty boisterous, and, <laughs> and there was like five different 
Jen's there and, and Mark's trying to figure out like, and giving all them different nicknames, which was hilarious. And uh, he peed off the balcony. And that Monday I go into work and they're like, listen, they're like, uh, I know we work with you, but, and we, we won't see your friend again, but you and your friend are not allowed at any parties <laughs> anymore. <laughs> oh man. Um, you're welcome. Yeah. That was awesome, dude. That was so fun. That was so fun. Please tell your wife I'm sorry. Yeah, she laughs when I bring up that story. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Th this one's a, a sentimental one, but during my wedding, you walked my mom down the aisle. That was great. Yeah, I did. She still talks about it. So A, she remembers. Mm. <laughs> and B, uh, that was that was very, very sweet. And then you gave a nice little speech uh, at the wedding. So I, I did. I, I did. Shout outs to Mama D. Big love. Big love. Um, yeah. And of course, Uncle George. Uncle George absolutely. stole my speech. Yeah, he stole your speech. <laughs> he was trying to take swigs of your beer. And That's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Pro tip: party with Uncle George. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. All right, we're getting to the top three. You ready? Ooh, I'm ready. All right. Uh, this is just the fact that me and you and all these different bands that we were in were basically the only two members at at any given time. At <laughs> most points. At most points, and had nothing to do with the. Uh, respect to all the other members who, who've come mm -hmm. and gone, but it just seemed like no one else could stick or stay. And, and at uh, so many different points, it was just me and you, hence why we just formed the something where I was on acoustic and you were on the drums. Uh, yep. The recordings were just us. Like everything just seemed at the end of the day to be just us. <laughs> I guess nobody else could put up with us. I guess, yeah. I was going to say, <laughs> wait, what does that say at the end of the day? Were we that, were we that big of a pain in the ass, but uh, ah. you know, fun memories mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right number two how can i leave this one out this is the projectile puke on the snail. oh man that time i murdered a snail <laughs> we were practicing at andre's right that was andre's yes. rehearsal space i don't remember yes. the name of the business but no um, no 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 it was in, in the lovely city of plantation florida mm -hmm. um i wasn't feeling i was sweating like i was sweating more than usual while playing yeah and uh, we, I mean, you want to tell a story? <laughs> we keep going. I mean, yeah, it was just one of, during one of our breaks, you got out and you're like, yeah, let's go outside and walk around like we always do and, and shoot the shit. And you were sweaty and you did feel good. And next thing I know, uh, there's a snail there and you, you bend over and it's this projectile fountain on, on, on the snail and, and all of our feet, uh, me and the bass players, you just see our feet kind of just go ahead and disperse. And that, that snail just didn't know what was going on, but that thing literally had distance to it. Like it was that, I, it was that impressive. I think if you ask Chippy who was playing bass for us at the time or, or Joshua, as he likes to be known nowadays, um, he'll tell you, I said, Hey, you want to see if I can hit that snail from here? <laughs> and then I puked like five feet. <laughs> That's amazing. To hit like just full projectile vomit. Yeah. Oh, so incredible. And then we went back to practice because I felt great. Yeah, you felt great after that. Yeah. Impressive. <laughs> Very impressive feet. Very impressive. Impressive. All right. And number one, mm -hmm. number one. Uh, I wish this would come back because I would totally uh, do it again with you. But mm -hmm. it's when we went to the revival tour, mm. right? We took a weekend, we went yep. to Tampa. Uh, our souls uh, were, uh, at least mine at the time, slightly emptied. Uh, they got filled up just in a, uh, a, a an amazing show and performance. And, and outside of all that, it was just great to hang out with you and and, and do what we always uh, do. But man, what what a fun fun filled time that was. Yeah, that was a great trip. We went uh, St. Petersburg, uh, yep. Florida. Uh, for those of you familiar with the west coast of Florida, just north of Tampa. Mm -hmm. uh, or just to the side of Tampa. I don't know how the, where that thing is. Um, I'm there all the time, and I still don't know. Um, <laughs> the State Theater, which is no longer open, which is a bummer. And then uh, me, and, me and the big guy went to Ebor. Um, yes. Because the Hold Steady told us not to. Yes. Uh, so we had to go. You know, you, when the Hold Steady says not to go to Ebor, you go to Ebor. Because uh, <laughs> it's a great time. That town's still weird and shitty, man. I love it. Yeah, it is. It mm -hmm. is. And, and I think if I'm... Uh, because I was there a couple of weekends ago, but, but now that state theater and in, in St. Pete, cause St. Pete is now like way built up now. Right. Oh yeah. It's super nice now. Yeah. Yeah. There's still that scummy bar across the street, but it's even nicer. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So that was a good weekend. And I, I wish the uh, revival tour would somehow come back, but I don't, I don't think it is, but it was mm -hmm. great seeing it though. And I'm glad we did that road trip. So there you go. Mark top 10. Thanks brother. I really appreciate it. That was, yeah. uh, See? I was I was a little nervous about what might come out there, but it was all pretty good. <laughs> I thought you were uh, 
one of my favorites, right? And we can, uh, no, I'm just going to do it now. We'll forget by your birthday. Uh, there was a Beatles tribute band playing at, uh, what's the name of where the, the, the Marlins play? Or at Joe Robbie Stadium, because they don't play there anymore. Right, right. And, um, or whatever it was called then. Uh, so we were like, okay, we're going to go to this Marlins game. Oh, we're going to see yes. this great Beatles tribute band. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, and then, and then you'll just sleep on the couch, right? It was me, Frank yes. and his wife. Yes. Um, so we decided, okay, well let's pregame. We'll, we'll, we'll tailgate in the parking lot before yep. we go in. We went in with like one left, one out yeah. left in the oh ninth God. inning hammer drunk. We never, yeah. Hammer drunk. The whole game. Um, the whole, yeah. We missed the entire baseball game. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, but the band was really good, right? Because they yeah. played in the middle of the field after the show. It was kind of cool. It was. Um, and then I woke up super hungover on your couch. Yes. And uh, Frank's daughter had painted her arms <laughs> with with finger paint <laughs> and said, Uncle Mark, I look like you. <laughs> oh, yes. And that's that's one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh, good time. I still haven't been invited back to his house. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you also live three hours away, but well, yes. that's, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. That, that was 15 years ago, but it's fine. I know, no. I know. 11. Yeah, well, I know. I was just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good times and more Thanks, to be man. had too, most mm -hmm. importantly. Yeah, cool. Well, that sure. was fun, Mark. And mm -hmm. uh, now I might bum you out because we have a humdinger for the next episode, Mark. Oh, boy. Uh, this is where I ruin your birthday and saying that Greta Van Fleet has a new album out. Uh, in one of our early episodes, uh, we reviewed their first record, Anthem uh, of the Peaceful Army, Shit. and we caught some heat and backlash, and I will make reference of that uh, next week, mm -hmm. but here we are. I we're at it again, right? They have their second album released, The Battle at Garden's Gate. It is out, Mark, and we, <laughs> we're we going to chat about it, pal. What do you think about that? Oh, fuck me. Um, if people think they hated my review of the first album... It's not half as much as I hated that smiling pulled of sh pile of just imitation dukage. <laughs> that that album sucked, man. I'm not looking forward to this, <laughs> but it'll be fun to hang out with you, brother. Um, that's rock and roll. So let's let's see what the uh, the brothers Von Greta or whatever the fuck they're called uh, can redeem themselves, or if this uh, loser hipster garbage will uh, turn into a classic and some twirling mustachioed uh, single speed <laughs> bike. <laughs> bullshit way i'm amped i'm i'm, I'm, I'm just <laughs> answering the reactions <laughs> oh, i'm not looking forward to this i know i apologize man no it's all right hey you know what um this is what rock and roll is doing i think uh we owe it to ourselves as a rock and roll podcast to get in there see what it's about tell you if we like it or not you know i was surprised though because we really hated the foo fighters record right and yeah and probably as much as we hated the first Greta Van Fleet, but we caught a lot more shit for the Greta Van Fleet. Yeah. Um, so listen, you're welcome to disagree with us. Frank and I, this is crazy. It's going to blow your mind. We'll listen to your argument about why you think the record is good. That said, when we post the episode and you're like, these guys are fucking idiots. <laughs> tell us why. Yeah. You don't just call us idiots because you're a fucking idiot, you fucking idiot. Right. Tell us why we're fucking idiots. Yeah. It, it, retorts aren't good when you're like, oh, well, your guy's music, taste of music, then stinks. Or I, I'd hate to know what you listen to. Just Wait, it's a whole podcast about what we listen to, you asshole. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Tell us why you think it's good. Right. Now, that doesn't mean that we're going to still be like, oh, well, based on that. It is good because it sounds different to us. It, it enters mm -hmm. our brain differently. We 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 sense things differently. Yeah. Uh, everyone's everyone's going to be different with their opinions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. And, I'll, and ours I'll, are just right. That's all. That's all. That's it. At the end <laughs> of the day, guys. <laughs> oh man! Listen. Thank you so much for listening. Like, subscribe, comment, suggest. Uh, happy birthday to Mark. And hey be safe, everybody. Hey. Uh. Those of you out there in, in podcast land, I just want you to know, bye-bye. Bam.